so now I want to show you some pictures of the anal area and dysplasia and normal tissue. These are photos that have come from high resolution anoscopy done in the dysplasia clinic at UCSF. First slide here is of normal anal tissue and you'll see that there are no lesions, that it's normal tissue. And as we go forward, we can see that there's an abnormal transition zone in the anal area in this particular slide. We can look at a high-grade anal lesion. And then we have an anal lesion in a woman as well. So we can see that there Men and women are affected equally with high-grade dysplasia, high-grade anal lesions. So I'm going to be talking about the treatment of HSIL, which is basically the ability to prevent anal cancer in people who have HPV-associated disease. There currently is still no standard treatment of anal HSIL in the Western Clinic. Anal surgeons more commonly treat warts or cancer, and they rarely treat anal dysplasia. There's also controversy within the field over whether treatment prevents enough anal cancer to warrant treatment. Chinese medicine treatment is non-invasive and evidence-based with few side effects. So that would give some additional impetus for treating anal disease prior to the development of anal cancer. So Western anal treatment is more problematic for several reasons. One, it's painful, the ablation therapies. Two, surgeons are not trained in high-resolution anoscopy. It's a very specialized area. And therefore, they cannot always find the areas that are identified by HRA for treatment, leading to insufficient treatment. This is one of the things that the people at UCSF, and particularly Dr. Naomi J, are trying to train as many anal surgeons and people who are working with people with anal HSIL to develop their abilities to be able to use high-resolution anoscopy. There are also commonly recurrences post-treatment. So non-surgical methods such as Chinese medicine therapies would be a tremendous advantage for people with anal disease. Additional cofactors for cancer development include cigarette smoking, history of oral contraceptive use, nutritional deficiencies, parity might be a possible cofactor, and also the age of first sexual activity. So additional risk factors for cancer development include co-infection with HIV, other concurrent STDs, which can cause the ability to develop more anal or cervical or vulvar disease, and lack of follow-up for previous HSLI diagnosis is actually a very important one because there must be follow-up in order to prevent cancer.